let's talk about will contests. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who's been practicing probate and family law in San Antonio, Texas for 35 years. I recently read an article in the Wall Street Journal about the feuding heirs of the estate of former Texas Gov. Dolph Briscoe and how they are fighting over whether a will of one of his children is a valid will. And it put me to mind to describe to you what it takes to make a valid will in the state of Texas and what is not going to work in terms of a will contest. Now, a will in the state of Texas can only be made by somebody who is at least 18 years of age or married or in the armed forces. So if you are under age, the judge is gonna throw out that will. It's gonna be void and it's not going to be admitted into evidence. That's fairly easy to prove with the person's birth certificate, their date of birth, and so forth. Another element is the will has to be signed by the testator, the person and making the will in front of two witnesses. If it's typed, it has to have two witnesses and they have to sign the will. Again, that's fairly to, to tell by looking at the will. Is it signed by the two witnesses and the testator? If it's not, it doesn't matter whether anybody's contesting or not, the judge is not going to admit that will into probate. He's going to find it's not a valid will, throw it out and disregard it. Things that are harder to prove though is the person making the will has to know generally the name nature of his property. You don't have to know exactly how much money you have in the bank, but have some idea of your wealth and whether you own real estate and stocks and that kind of thing. Have to know who your natural heirs are. If you don't know who your children are or who your siblings are, then you are not of sufficient mental capacity to make a will. And you have to be able to understand what a will is, that you're actually signing a document that distributes your property after your death and be able to hold all of those things in your mind at the same time. What kind of property you have, who your natural heirs are, and that what a will is. And if you can do all of that, you do not have to leave any property to your relatives or your natural heirs, but you have to at least know who they are. That mental capacity can sometimes be attacked with evidence that a person has Alzheimer's. If you have a psychiatrist who has recently tested the person, there is ways to prove with testimony whether the person knew who their heirs were, knew what they were doing at the time. But still, all that matters is that they knew those things at the moment they signed the will, not if they knew them the day before or the day after. So it is still very difficult to prove what they knew at the time that they signed the will. Lastly, the will has to be signed voluntarily. The person has to not be forced to do it. They have to actually intend to do what they're doing when they sign the will, not be mistaken and not understand what they're doing as signing a will, or be so influenced by another person that they don't feel like they have a choice. And that is what is called testamentary capacity and undue influence. If somebody is making you sign a will that does something different from what you would have wanted to do. Those things, again, are all in the person's mind, and it depends on what they were thinking at the time that they signed the will. So it's very difficult to prove. What does not work is to say that the will is unfair or that it isn't what that person normally would have wanted. If you had testimony that they said they were going to do one thing and then they did something differently, that really isn't enough to support throwing the will out. The presumption is that it's a good valid will and you have to prove that that person did not understand what they were doing at the time. If you can't prove that, then the judge is going to find, based on on the written document, what's in front of him, that it was a valid will based on what the witnesses say at the time. I hope this helps. I do want to say that the things that I say here are not legal advice to you. It does not create an attorney client relationship. You're not my client. I'm not your attorney because of this video. All of my clients have to sign a written contract to hire me before they are my client. And also, you shouldn't rely on this as legal advice for your particular situation. The laws change constantly. The laws are different from state to state. If you're not in the state of Texas, I have no idea what the law is in your state. And also, you know, every situation has various nuances and different factors which might be exceptions to the rule, which you will only know by consulting with an attorney. But my purpose in making this is to make you aware of the basic rules and give you some vocabulary, 
so that you can consult a, an attorney and have you know an intelligent conversation about the elements of your particular situation. If you need to consult with an attorney about a will or a family law matter, give me a call and I'd be happy to discuss things with you further. My name is Laura Hurd.